Well, there's the COVID numbers for Pennsylvania. If you look there on the left where it says April 1st, stay at home order and then follow that down. You can see it's at a pretty low point compared with all the way in the right where we are right now. And so Pennsylvania's taking a slightly different tack on COVID-19 right now. There, there's no talk at all about closing universities or anything like that. But I do want to use this to just keep on urging you guys to do what Dr. Burks would say is the right thing to do, the thing that works best, is the masking and the distancing. So, so go ahead and we'll keep on doing that and we'll see what plans God has for us. Ed Stetzer said this yesterday. Right now, the presidential race, as the stuff's coming in, it, it's, it is tied. Uh, a state could take it either way. Uh, but Ed Stetzer said, as believers, our allegiance isn't to a donkey or an elephant. Democrats or Republicans, right? Our allegiance is not to a donkey or an elephant. It is to the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb that was slain for the world. And I think in four different media outlets this morning, I, they all said the same thing. Well, it's a day after election and life is going on, and it will but life's got to go on for Christ's sake. Now, this semester, because we had these shorter chapels, I want to take you through something from God's inspired Word that might help you to, to build into your life some things that you would need. And so we've talked all this semester so far about your heart and about wisdom and things that go along with that. And I started with Proverbs 4.23. You've got one job, guard your heart, because everything in life comes out of it. And my follow-up was, but sometimes that doesn't work because a fool trusts his own heart. And we're designed to trust in God and then have our heart shaped after the Word of God. There's hope for our hearts because our hearts can take truth in, choice we have to make. And with that, I said one of the best ways to go the next step is to be with people who can sow good seed into your life, okay? Those who walk with the wise will be wise. The companion of fools suffers harm. And I said last week, it's as true as gravity. It really is. So today, we're doing application. We will next time also. And this is what we're working on today. Jesus makes courage possible. I mean, the Bible is full of places where we're, we're admonished to have courage, to, to be fearless. And what we're looking at today, I hope is going to help you understand why it is that statements like that or commands like that are in the Word of God. I'm going to take it from Proverbs 28.1, which says, The wicked flee when no one pursues but the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no one pursues. They're always looking over their shoulder. But the righteous are bold as a lion. So when you take a left out of the main driveway and head down Bernard Road, get up into Clark Stream, uh, third house on the right, there's a state trooper who lives there. And uh, state troopers can do anything they want to anywhere in Pennsylvania. Every now and then the guy runs radar from his driveway. And so... Uh, I'm careful driving through Clark's Green because there's kids there, and I don't want to go flying through there because I'm self-focused and mess up somebody's life. So I'm, I'm doing 25. I'm especially doing it if Diane's in the car to remind me that I should be doing it. But we, we get there. And so you go over the top of the hill, and there's the guy with the radar gun. And bam, no matter how fast you're going, it seems like you hit the brakes. I knew I wasn't doing it wrong because we have that inside of us. That, that guilt is there inside of us that sometimes keeps us. You know, you're driving down you know, 81 South or route, route 80 and come around a curve and there's a trooper there. You know, next mile you drive using only your rearview mirror. How is that possible? You know, is he chasing me? The wicked flee when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. I want to talk about that. The righteous person? Righteous person, I mean godly person, good person, obedient person, blameless person, God-fearing person, someone whose life has been affected by the work of God. It's a life guided by the work of God, living by an external standard, God's Word, because of what has happened internally. So I want to talk for a few minutes about righteousness. Jesus makes courage possible because he provided righteousness for me, provided righteousness for me. And I'm thinking here about justification, a good Bible word, justification righteousness. And that's where, you know, the, it's the word that's even tied into finances and linked to that by the verbs that are used with it, where it imagines, you know, that I've got this huge debt of sin that's keeping me from having a relationship with God, and God takes the debt away. Well, it's got to go someplace. And he gives the debt to Jesus, who alone has ever been qualified to pay a debt for me, the God-man, sinless, 
died in my place. And then instead of leaving my account empty, he takes the righteousness of Jesus and puts it on my account. And if I were to die and stand before the Lord, he will not ask me, why should I let you into my heaven? But if he did, I couldn't say, I've tried awfully hard. There should be some benefit in that. The only thing I could say is, I sinned. I fell short of the glory of God. But now I'm justified by your grace, God, as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I don't have anything to offer you, God, to build a relationship. But you've given me that. The wicked flee when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. And the righteous are bold as a lion because we know where we stand with God. I'm not trying the best I can to be what he wants me to be. He has put righteousness on my account. I know my eternity is secure. I know my relationship with God can't be shaken. It affects the way I live. Jesus makes courage possible because he builds righteousness in me. Okay? The first part was justification. He declares me righteous. Builds righteousness in me. Here I'm thinking about sanctification. Another good Bible word. Has the word holy built into the front of it there. Something set apart for God. Sanctification, righteousness. A lot of places where we could go to think about this, but looking here at Romans 8. It says 28 through 30, but I cut it short there. We know that for those who love God, that's me, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he explains what's going on for, because those whom he foreknew, those with whom he established a, a loving and intimate and eternal relationship, those whom he foreknew, he predestined, marked out our final destiny to be conformed to the image of his son. This is the time in life when things may not be running as smoothly as you'd like them to. When you're asking yourself, why is this going on? Uh, you, does God know? Does God understand? Is, is God caring about me? But the fact is that God has a plan. He is transforming me, predestining you and me to be like Jesus in our character, our speech, our thoughts, our actions. See, the, the righteous are bold as a lion because they know God's purpose for their life. They're not just adrift in the ocean someplace wondering what's going to happen. And I don't know how sin has bent you, but I can guarantee you that if you are justified, if you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, that if you're justified right now, God is sanctifying you. He is working to make you more like His Son. And you say, but what's happening in my life? Hey, whatever's happening in your life, you can get to be like Jesus from there. If you use the book, you can get to be like Jesus from there. And so instead of just saying, come on, make this go away, we say, what's the Word of God say about this? How can I become more like Jesus in this? And so I'm bold as a lion in this because I know there's a purpose, God's purpose in my life, becoming like my Savior. Jesus makes courage possible because he secures righteousness forever. Okay, so we started out by saying that he provides righteousness, justification. And he builds righteousness in a different sense. Sanctification, making me like Jesus. And now he secures righteousness. I, I could have used Romans 8 for this, but Paul wrote 1 Corinthians about the same time he wrote Romans. And he's got that fantastic chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, all about glorification which is an odd-looking word. I mean, justification, sanctification, yeah, this seems okay, but glorification seems weird. This is where we actually become like him, totally. We're changed. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shouldn't all die. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trump last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will be raised, imperishable and we shall be changed. The Word of God says that God will transform me 
into perfection. He will write His law on my heart. I will be totally changed, completely comfortable talking with Him. Say, I'm bold as a lion because I know my future is secure. When I was dean of men, I walked down the sidewalk and uh, walked past one of our guys and greeted him. He said, hi. Twitched a little bit when I walked by. Later on, he shows up at the office. He says, all right, since you know, let's talk our way through it. Okay. And so he begins to tell me how he'd messed up. And he'd, he'd messed up. And they said, I just, I, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, how did you know that I knew? He said, well, it's the way you said hi to me. Okay, well, if I say hi again, let's find out what else you haven't told me uh, that we're working on here. And I said, you know, I, God's purpose in your life is to become like Jesus. Let's get the Bible open. Let's figure out how to become like Jesus from where you are right now. But he'd been looking over his shoulder. The wicked flee when no one pursues. He'd been looking over his shoulder, afraid of who was going to know, who was going to catch him, who was going to find out. And instead, this, becoming bold as a lion, because you know who you are in Christ. Jesus makes courage possible. The truth of justification and sanctification and glorification. The truth of God's work in my life to ensure my eternity with Him and make me like His Son and transform me entirely. That's great. But it's got to come from there to here. You know, the, the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament knew the Word of God, was taken away captive, his life was profoundly changed, and all he had to do was keep his mouth shut, go with the flow, it would have been fine. You know, in Daniel chapter 1, he says, I'm not going to eat that food. God was at work. He decided to trust God's Word and see what would happen. Yeah, and, and when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his friends, you know, we're not going to worship you, O king. Well, then I will kill you in the fiery furnace. Well, God could save us, but you know, he might not. doesn't matter. You're not God. We're not going to worship you. Where's that kind of courage from? Knowing what God has done in your life. You know, Daniel 6, when they said, everyone here worships the king for the next month. He said, no. He went home, prayed like he always did, and wound up in the lion's den. The work of God in someone's life, when they start here, and then begin to walk by faith when they start to make choices based on the Word of God. We're, we're not talking about personality. That's easy for an extrovert like you. I could never do that. I'm an introvert. It's some of the strongest people I know are introverts. Not because of who they are, but because they've chosen to walk with God. If we believe what the Bible says about righteousness, it can change everything in our relationship with each other and also with the people that we walk with. Jesus makes courage possible. Faith makes it actual. So I got to ask you in 2020, the day after the election, what faith choice do you need to make based on the absolute security that God's provided of His work in your life? Because you're either going to be looking over your shoulder all the time, or you're going to be saying, this is the word of God, I'm going to do it. The wicked man flees, though no one pursues. The righteous are bold as a lion. That's why we sang The Battle Belongs. Okay? I want you to take that song with you. I want you to think about the fact that God's work in our lives is powerful and true. And let that be the thing that shapes our lives. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for letting us be together here. We thank you for the surety of your work. And we pray that you would work that out in our lives during these next few days as we work here together and try to learn and grow for Jesus' sake. Amen. Oh, Steve's going to help out by cleaning again, so you guys enjoy lunch. See you later. <laughs>